You know, nobody asked me if I wanted to exist. Yeah, one day, boom, there you are. And you think to yourself, why am I here? Well, what do you think? Is there a reason we're here? Do our lives have any real significance? Well, that depends. On what? On whether or not God exists. Wait, hold on. Are you saying that my life has no significance because I don't believe in God? No, not at all. I'm saying that if God doesn't exist, it doesn't matter what you believe. Our lives would have no objective meaning, value or purpose. Many atheists themselves recognize this. If atheism is true, life is absurd. Okay, and why do they think that? To begin with, if God does not exist, then the physical universe is all there is. Which means you and I are just accidental byproducts of nature. Right. So? That means we were not intentionally designed. So there's no purpose for us being here. Whoa. It gets worse. If God does not exist, there is no absolute standard of moral value. You've heard of Richard Dawkins, the atheist. He points out that in a materialistic universe, there is at bottom no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pointless indifference. So you're saying atheists can't be good people? No, I'm not saying that. Many atheists live good lives. What I'm saying is, atheism fails to provide an objective basis for saying any particular action is good or evil. Oh, come on. After millions of years of sociobiological evolution, humans have developed a sense of morality. We all know it's good to feed a hungry child and bad to torture someone for fun. Of course we do. But that's precisely what atheism cannot explain. If there's no God, then what we consider right or wrong is nothing more than an accident of evolution or a human social convention. So what? I'm good with that. Really? Evolution implies survival of the fittest, not morality. And social convention means that racism, intolerance and cruelty are not really wrong. They just happen to be unpopular. Okay, so atheists need to come up with some objective standard for rights and wrongs. How about this? If an action leads to human flourishing, then we can say it's objectively good. And if it doesn't, it's objectively evil. But why think that human flourishing is good? Aren't you being species-centric? Why not refer instead to the flourishing of rats or cabbages? Well, uh... And who gets to decide what contributes to human flourishing? Hitler was convinced killing millions of Jews would promote human flourishing. And Margaret Sanger thought forcing poor people to be sterilized would lead to human flourishing. As Guy Nielsen points out, pure practical reason will not take you to morality. So if atheism is true, there is no legitimate basis for saying that behaving one way is worse than behaving any other way. So it really doesn't matter how you live your life. Your day-to-day -day choices are meaningless. That's depressing. So if there's no God, what happens when you die? Well, nothing. You simply cease to exist. Right. So one person lives a kind, generous, thoughtful life. Another lives a horrible, violent, selfish life. It doesn't matter. In both cases, the outcome is the same. Nothingness. So how can their life choices have any objective meaning? Well, it's certainly meaningful if I discover a cure for cancer or save a child's life. I agree completely. But atheism can't explain why. Scientists predict that eventually the whole universe and mankind with it will die out. So everything comes to nothing. That's why atheist Bertrand Russell says we must build our lives on the firm foundation of despair. No thanks. I'd rather live a happy life. You're not alone. Every atheist has to choose between being happy or being consistent. You can tell the whole world you're an atheist, but you can't really live like one. Okay, so you're a Christian. If your God did exist, how would that change anything? If Christianity is true, then each one of us is here for a reason. And life does not end at the grave. And God, He's the absolute standard of goodness. He knows you, He loves you, and He intentionally created you. 
So your life ultimately does have objective meaning, value and purpose. That means you can live a life that's both happy and consistent. Well, that doesn't prove Christianity is true. Agreed. I'm simply pointing out that for Christians, living a life that is both happy and consistent is possible. For atheists, it's not. So what are you going to choose?